Hi, greetings everyone. We're going to talk a little bit about feelings. Feelings is a hot button topic. Um, perhaps you've seen maybe at times in the media where people are just screaming about their feelings matter and, and so on and so forth. And the, I think it's real important to understand some things that the scripture talks about in regard to our feelings. Uh, our feelings are connected to our more often than not, our, our natural self. Scripture tells us how important it is to have an objective um, source of truth, an objective source of righteousness, something outside ourselves. You see, we have record numerous times in Scripture of what mankind looks like operating merely on their feelings all the way back to the time of noah where every imagination of men's heart was wicked all that they could just desired was just the sinfulness as the world got further and further away from god judges tells us twice in the book of judges in verse uh, chapter 17 verse 6 repeated again in chapter 1 verse 25 that in those days there was no king in israel there was no objective leadership but every man did that which was right in his own eyes that which he felt he should do and read the book of judges and it has some very um, wicked accounts sinful accounts dark accounts of what that looks like There is so much danger in our feelings, which are uh, so fluid, being our guide, that we are just following those. Our feelings are very subjective. They're not objective. Subjective basically is the idea that this truth, this uh, thing that we, we, our paradigm, is based on our perspective, internal perspective, the subject, or their feelings, or their preferences. And it's the subject making the decision of what is right, what is wrong, within their own paradigm. But in contrast to that is that which is objective, something outside of self. This truth is not influenced, changed, or altered based on a personal viewpoint. But it finds its truth anchored in that object. And for a Christian, it's God's word, or it should be. The leading, tugging, or pulling of the Holy Spirit always with no exception, will point you to or pull you toward what God's word says, that which is righteous, as God would declare it righteous. However, our feelings, in contrast to that, often do the contrary, and that leading by the Holy Spirit is in contrary to God's word. Or in, in, excuse me, God's word is contrary to our feelings many times and vice versa. Okay. You see, it kind of is uh, framed this way. The Holy Spirit inspired Paul to tell us in Galatians 5, 16 and 17. This I say, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust, desires and feelings, of the flesh so the, the flesh has its own set of desires and feelings for the flesh lusteth lusteth against the spirit the spirit against the flesh these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do that you would or that you desire that you have this push and pull tug why can't we trust our feelings you know the world says follow your heart 
trust your heart. Trust your feelings. Uh, only do that which makes you feel good. The problem with that is scripture paints a picture of the carnal nature to include the feelings that are within the package. Everything about our carnal nature is tainted with and by sin to include our feelings. Our feelings, number two, they're not fixed. They're not objectively static. They, they sway. They're not rock solid. And they're fleeting, or, or, and they're much more like a roller coaster rails, a set of roller coaster rails. They go up and down. The Bible uses an analogy that um, being tossed with the waves. They're much more like that than they are some beacon on a hill fixed with its light shining for us to follow our, the correct path. You see, our beacon is God, objectively. His word, objectively. The Holy Spirit, though internal, is bringing an objective truth inside, giving you a competing set of desires. Where our feelings are quite often, instead of that beacon that lights our way to make our path safe, our feelings are the very snares that we hope to avoid. When fear overwhelms us, we're crippled. When anger goes out of control, we can a, a person can completely lose control of their being and just go into full brutish carnal mode. When we're overly sad, we can't look at the things around us truthfully because that emotion is just feels like a, a drowning weight. Scripture says in Jeremiah 17, 9, and a Christian really needs to understand their carnal emotions and what the Bible says objectively about them as opposed to what maybe they've been taught or learned as they've grown up. The heart, the human heart, the human feelings and emotions, what we often operate by, is deceitful. It will trick you. It is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Only God can. We can't even know our own heart. Our own heart will deceive us. Our feelings will deceive us. You see, that's the status in regard to the carnal aspect of our carnal nature, our heart, our feelings. What is the world? Why is prostitution so popular in this world globally? The sexual feeling, that drive. Why are so many sins growing because people are operating like brute beasts and searing their conscience, their intellect, and just operating on feelings? Should we operate the way the world operates you see understanding how wicked our carnal nature is and how we need to check everything we do with God's word because many times we're walking contrary to it and fulfilling the lust of the flesh we need to operate more on fact than feeling. God's word tells us how to navigate what spirit, what um, influence that we should heed to. And there's much to be said about our feelings and how they can get us in trouble, how these lusts that we have you see, at one time, many people were pretty much, even in the Christian body, had no problem discussing certain sexual orientations such as homosexuality and the other and saying, it's wrong. God's word says it's wrong. Therefore, it's wrong. End of, end of discussion. 
in the past few generations is more and more people within the body have had family members begin to be drawn into that dark lifestyle, that self-destructive lifestyle, which is in every way contrary to God's design because they feel a deep connection to that loved one, which inherently is not wrong, but they have now compromised their view on what the Bible says on that topic. Why? Because of their feelings. And we see that in many, many other realms. It's our feelings overriding. That's the compromises most often are surrounding feelings instead of truth. God's word, I like this little definition it was put together <clears throat> regarding facts. God's word is fact. It is facts cover to cover. And they're things that are always true despite your feeling, despite how you feel about it, despite how you view it, despite how it makes you feel. It's why Christians have stopped reading big portions of scripture or they're even changing certain doctrines within their congregations because the congr those doctrines, though true, they don't make you feel good. They can really rub you a certain way, especially if it's something that you ha or do, something that you uh, don't like. Maybe you think God's judgment is, is too harsh because he's perfectly holy and not subjectively holy um, or definitely not holy in the way we see things. But he's, he's perfectly just and true. So we, we will change a doctrine because it doesn't make us feel good about God. That is is a dangerous path to walk. We as Christians need to try to look at God's word as the absolute and final authority in all matters of faith, our, our attitudes and practice, how we see things, whether we feel they make us feel good or not. That's that's irrelevant. It's it's a fact. We're told in God's word not to rely on our own understanding, which is in the carnal sense, is inseparable from our feelings. Should we only be nice to those that make us feel good when they're around? Should we be snappy and cold or even sinful toward those that basically either offer us nothing in the way of feeling? or very easily irritate us because we in every way disagree with them, which would them, you know, consider them to be an enemy and us an enemy to them. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Not your subjective, ever-changing uh, view of truth or how you feel but God's truth. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. You know, by running just on our feelings, we can say, ought we to love or, you know, to do good to our neighbor according to how they make us feel in that moment? Or always, because doing good by them, a.k.a. loving them, is it's right at all times, period. Even when it goes directly against how we feel. We don't feel like doing good for them. We don't feel like doing that, or we don't feel like giving, or we don't feel like just dealing with them. We don't feel like it. Should we not do good by them because we don't feel like it? Of course not. That, that is every way carnal and against what the Bible would tell us to do. Should we only read the Bible when we feel happy, when it when it when we feel on fire for it? Should we only visit the sick or gather with other believers or pray or only do good things 
or follow God's will when we feel like it or because it's the right thing to do. I mean, of course, the answer is because it's the right thing to do, regardless of how we feel. Doing those things brings honor to God. It's pleasing to God for us to obey his will, even if our will is in contradiction to that because we're looking at things through the flesh. Our feelings are not following, but you're yielding, saying, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling here, but I know this is the right thing to do because you said so. That should be our path. You know, if you were in the army and you looked at your commander, the, the, the object you were, are trusting to give you orders and lead you into combat, lead you to in your mission into victory, and this later changed his view, his path, his vigor, his will, his truth every few minutes, every few hours. And at times would over here say it's right, over here say it's right, and just contradict himself one after another after being just incredibly unstable, would you follow that later? Would this be the God that you wanted to lead your life, to lead you into that mission? Absolutely not. So why would we want to follow our feelings and have our feelings be the ultimate arbiter of truth for us when they're exactly the same thing? They change when we're hungry. They change when we're hurting, when we're in pain. They, they change when we're tired. They, they change when we're just frustrated. They change, they change, they change. And if we follow that, we're just going to live erratic, unstable lives. When we have a feeling that lines up with Scripture, run with it. Follow it. See that it's perfectly okay. It, it complements, in that point, God's word. But contrary to that, if it is in opposition to God's word, it's like people feel they can be a different gender. They can't. In the beginning, God made them male and female. In the end of time, they will st still be only male and female. However you feel doesn't change the reality your feelings are lying to you your heart is desperately wicked above all things it's deceitful and it's lying to you you see the church is meant to be the pillar and ground of truth that's what we're supposed to be known for truth we're losing that because people are offended their feelings aren't being tickled. Their feelings aren't being pampered because they're trying to do something or live in a reality that's contrary to the truth. It's contrary to reality. And you're not loving them. You're not doing good by them, enabling that. And it's that same way with many other things. We as Christians should follow facts over feelings truth over temperament that's the christian walk simplified this is the battle of romans 7 your feelings versus the truth your feelings your carnal this thing that's in your members warring against the holy spirit warring against god's word walking in the flesh walking in the spirit paul paints a real-time struggle between what a saint can know versus what he does, and I believe very deeply motivated when it's to the contrary, by how he feels. Look at Hebrews 11, the absolute famous 
chapter of faith. The accounts. The successes the believers have that we're walking not by sight or feeling, but by faith. And in, in direct opposition, I believe in many, if not all cases, two different feelings they might have been experiencing. Many walked to their death. They were sown asunder, tortured, imprisoned. How do you think they might have felt during all this? Daniel being thrown in the lion's den, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego staring at an intensely hot furnace. Rahab having to lie to the government officials of that time to love, to do good by the spies, to hide them in contrary, you know, look at what she may have felt facing the possible consequences had she been found out. Example after example after example of people following the Lord, trusting the Lord, despite the roller coaster of feelings. Abraham looking at his son, thinking he's fixing to offer up his son, his only begotten, his unique, one of a kind son, different from any son that he had by Hagar or afterwards, this miracle child. But he obeyed through faith, despite his feelings. But like I said, if your feelings line up with God's word, awesome. If they go against it, you need to make a choice. I need to make a choice. We all need to make a choice. Are you going to trust God's word to be true and right and that which is worthy of you following in spite of our feelings, which we know are tainted with sin. They're wicked and very often lie to us and try to lead us astray, which we have to make a choice. Psalm 119, 105, thy word, not my feelings, not my experience, thy word, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It is what is painting the way. It's safely to step here. It's safely to step there. It's safely to step here. Stop. Hold. Wait a minute. God's word is, is teaching us that. Our feelings, a lot of times, we it's like running with our eyes shut and then wondering why we're slamming into tree after tree after tree. But it's like living life blind. We see an actual example in scripture, and I'm sure there's many, but I just pulled you one. Psalm 56, 3, when you see feeling being completely contrary to what God says over and over, God says, fear not. Fear not what man can do unto you. But it says, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. You see, the fear, Fear is contrary to what God wants. He wants your trust to know that we're in his hand, that we're safe, that he has us, that we won't leave this world until he says, punch out, your time's up. But we can be afraid. But what does the Bible say? What time I'm afraid I will trust in thee. <clears throat> when my feelings cause me this, this is what I need to do because you're rock solid. You're trustworthy. You have fulfilled, recorded promise after promise after promise. And if you have, you cannot lie. And if you said it and you did it in the past, I know I trust you'll do it in the future. We're faced as saints with the same decision as those of old, those from Hebrews 11, those recorded all throughout the Bible. We can live by sight, we can live by our feelings, we can live by our emotions. Or, we can live by faith in God's word, God's promises. And the question is, we should always ask, are we putting our faith in Christ, his word, that rock, that anchor to our soul? Or, 
feelings, which are forever shifting, unsteady, and can be influenced from a million different things. Which do you look to and which one does the God's word admonish us to follow? That's why I stress, some disagree with me, but I see what I see and I think the Bible supports it over and over again. Love is not just a feeling. Love is an action. Defined as doing good, loving. I love serve. Christ loved me and gave himself for me. You see? It's righteousness in action. So, and this is something we need to do and learn and learn what it is and, and how God's word says, hey, this makes it possible to do that with God's resources, spirit, so forth, so that we can reflect God's goodness in this dark world. Without these things, without the application, these good works, no man will see the Lord in you. No man will see the Lord's character being demonstrated in you. You see, this commandment's meant to be followed carte blanche. Simply because it's a commandment, we're, we ought to do it. Not because we feel like it or we don't feel like it, but because that's what we're supposed to do. Most of this world is operating purely on emotion, emoting, feelings. And that's why the world is growing more and more, looks like just aimless objects floating up and down on the waves of life. Not a clue what to do, how to live, how to think. We as Christians need to remember that we need to be anchored to God's word. That we have a sure and steady source of truth in his word that we can look directly to and follow regardless of how we're feeling. And we need to do this especially in these dark times that are getting darker and darker. 1 John 3, 23. And this is his, Jesus' commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Son of God, or excuse me, his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. As he gave us commandment. You, you don't see that unless you just ain't feeling it today. You see, sometimes we don't feel saved. Maybe we're out of fellowship with the Lord. Sometimes we don't feel like a lot of things, but that doesn't change the reality of what ought to be or what is. You're saved, sealed, secure forever. If you, as a person, have understood that you're a sinner, you owe a sin debt before God. If you understand that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, the Son, came into the world, lived a perfect life, went to the cross paying your sin debt, the wages or the penalty for sin is death, and he paid that, and you understand that the gift that he wants to give you is eternal life. Impute you with his very goodness, his righteousness, clearing all your sin debt. If you understand that, you're saved. If you think it's about what you do, that you have to negotiate with God or God does his part or you do your part you're missing the whole point of Jesus coming the Bible says all are guilty of sin there's none righteous no not one we the wages of that sin any sin is death which means separation from God in a literal hell forever that's what we the penalty for our crimes and he says the only payment acceptable is death. It ain't money. It's not turning from sin. It's not water baptism. It's not joining a church. It's not picking a certain denomination. When you look at the tag on the cost of your debt, it says death. And if you die with that debt unpaid, you'll stay forever in a literal hell. 
However, you don't have to. Nobody has to. God's not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance, come to faith in his son. That everyone understands that you don't have to go to hell because there's a payment, there's a gift sitting there in the hand of God, and he's trying to give it to you. He wants you to take all the stuff you're trying to give him, put it down, open your hands up, and say, Lord, I trust in you, in your heart, in your mind. Accept the payment that Jesus did for you is true, that he did it for you. And the Bible says if you will trust he did it for you, that he died, paying your sin debt, was buried, and he rose again, securing our salvation, proving to everyone that the payment was accepted, and he has the power to give you that gift. If you'll put your faith that that's true for you as an individual, that payment's put on your account. You never have to worry again, ever, about hell. That is resolved. He says he will make you his child. He will put you in his family, and he will keep you by his power. He'll never lose you. He'll never cast you out. The moment you trust him, you've passed from death into life. You'll never come into condemnation, John 5, 24. You possess right now life that can never end eternal life John 6 47 so I hope this has given you something to think about and in this world of a million voices don't take just my word for it take what I say think about it but check it by God's word not by your feelings by God's word not by your traditions by God's word not by what grandma taught you by God's word God's word is true. It is 100% factual, objectively. And it'll never steer you wrong. So till next time, I want to say, take care. God bless you, your family. Stay in God's word. Pray one for another. And just meditate every chance you get on just how amazing Jesus is to have done and promised in the future to do so much more based not on who we are, not on how we feel, not on what we've done, but based on who he is and how much he was willing to pay to secure you into his family. So be blessed.